Well, it's Dr. Akiona. I'm here. And I was hoping, I was trying to wait to see if Uncle Charlie was going to be here too. But as you can see, in, I'm going to, I'm guest hosting today for Uncle, for Uncle Mel and hoping that pretty soon we'll have Dr. Miskovich on. But we just uh, wanted to get things started. So hello. Um, I think maybe a, a lot of the village, so I have my special cup. Let's see. A lot of the village knows that um, Uncle Mel's dad, um, you know, is under the weather. So there's some stuff that you know people, his family, me, made us think about family and like stuff that he has to do. And so we're we're relieving Uncle Mel today. Um, I just got back, so I think um, I have no idea um, what everybody else is up to right now. But we just finished vaccinating at Konawina Elementary. So my day started before the sun rose and I zoomed back. Um, I'm at, in the Hapuna. We usually do some testing over here. Let me go look in the chat and see what's going on. Um, <laughs> so saying hello. Um, yeah, you know, I think right now I'm waiting for Dr. Miskovich to show up. And in the meantime, I will, let's, let's just, I can tell you about my day. So it's, um, we have a unique kind of opportunity on the Big Island because there's so little going on. Oh, I think, I think Doc is here. Um, but we do spend a lot of time kind of doing traveling. So this morning I woke up at five o'clock in Hilo, put some gas in my car and drove the long way, which is the most beautiful road up through Honoka'a, uh, through Waimea, picked up all my vaccinations in Hapuna and did, we went to vaccinate. So we did some boosters for a bunch of people um, at Kukio. So the employees, we did some first shots for some people and we finished some um, second doses for some people. I mean, we didn't even have time to take a break and then um, headed down to Konawana Elementary. So this was the second round that Principal McCloskey, he's a super cool guy, by the way. Um, Konawana Elementary, this was their second round. And so our team was down there doing both the staff and the kids. So some of the staff get boosters and then some of the kids. Um, I won't lie. There was a there were a couple of screams and some tears. But in general, I mean, it's a big deal because Kona Wine is pretty far south. I mean, they're not the most far south, but it's, you know, it was a nice, a, a nice turnout. So we did over 100 today and then I zoomed back up the coast. And so I see actually Dr. Dr. Miskovich is going to join us. So um, we can actually probably just kind of talk story and, and maybe he's going to tell you about his, he, he's been doing some interesting kind of things around about um, sports, but I'm going to bring him on because Uncle Mel taught me how to do this. And wow. He is. Wow. <laughs> this is just so special. We get to talk to the village, like with you yeah. as the guest host. Man, oh man! So and check we'll it out. To... We got captions. Yep. Hey, <laughs> nice. We have captions. We've got yeah. We're we're kind of pulling it up. So, hey, this yep. is like you know. So if we really start doing things like like if we swear a lot or something, then the show will get canceled or something. I guess we need recommendations coming from the village on how we should run this. <laughs> But no, 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 of course not. We would never, we would never, never do this. So. No, I mean, <laughs> I was like, well, if Uncle Charlie were here, we would be laughing a lot. I see yeah. another, I'm going to see. Yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. So I can see some of the chat. Um, I know. Yeah. So I, I can see all of the things from, I see, I see his dad said hi. Hello. So that is that on. Yeah, Uncle, Uncle yeah. Tom is on. Yeah. Um, Okay, so some of the questions. Do you wanna do you wanna talk about yeah. anything well, right now? Why don't why don't I just kind of just give my little brief overview and um, and basically just start talking a little bit about what some of the updates are. Okay. Um, some of the updates are right now are that um, the biggest thing we have everybody's talking about right now is Omicron, right? Well. Some of the things that's going on, some of the things that are going on with Omicron right now that I'm, everybody snows me on this show. I'm just going to be honest. The thing that is just more scary every single day 
is the transmission rate. The speed at which this is spreading is is just beyond what we would ever consider. This is the worst of any of uh, the COVID uh, variants. And um, over the last 12 hours out of Hong Kong came a study that basically reports that one of the things that's very, very different, which makes sense, is that it really binds in our respiratory and upper airways unlike anything. It doesn't it hits so much in your upper airways, it doesn't get down into the lungs as much. And so you're gonna have a lot of upper respiratory symptoms, headache, fatigue, sore throat, running nose. And, uh, and that probably goes along with the fact that we know all the mutations are occurring right at the spike at the top, you know, right at the cup at the top. So if this is that spike coming off, 10 mutations are right where it launches on and it is grabbing it so firmly that we just need so few droplets for it to get inside and to grab into your upper respiratory airway. That's now being shown and presumed to be the way this is so contagious. Um, I, I'm kind of Dr. Akiona and I are on the same kind of uh, schedule. Our days are starting way before sunrise and uh, mine you know, I, if you check my Facebook, I was on CNN uh, International last night and they had me talk about sports, which maybe we'll lighten it up, but it's, it's, that's still not really good to talk about sports, but we will. And, um, but then I got up very, very early and I've been dealing with uh, Omicron and just COVID in general across uh, the United States and some internationally. And um, we are, we're we're in for a serious winter throughout the United States and here in Hawaii. Everybody has heard me say this. Uh, we've heard the data right now with today's numbers, what, 280. Um, the, the village has heard me talk about this. And I think now we're going to hit that 500 mark, which five weeks ago, six weeks ago, I said it was probably mid-January to February 1st, end of the year. Unfortunately, we're probably going to hit it end of the year. Uh, if we do nothing as a state to try to change um, the trajectory, we're probably hitting a thousand by February or more. I mean, it's just that contagious. So um, very concerning. So that's the first thing I would say. And then the other thing I want to final, I want to say before I'll turn it back over to our host is that um, uh, we do not have a full understanding yet about the severity. So don't sit around and say, oh, it's less severe, right? We don't know. We do not have enough data anywhere to confirm it's less severe. So the take home message is stay safe, wear your masks and, and um, almost presume like we're starting all over again, which kind of unfortunately we are. So, Dr. Akiona, the questions uh, Laurel said, are we going to see hospitalizations increase? Absolutely. There's no way we're not going to see hospitalizations increase. We're going to um, probably see a real significant uh, increase in hospitalizations. And here's some of the things that, you know, they're not talking about. When you have this curve, like it's just so steep with a doubling now every two days to three days max, then there's so many people catching the disease that even if it's 25% less severe, because there's so many more people getting it, the hospitalizations will soar even faster. And that's the scary part is the chance it could overwhelm our hospital system so quickly. So um, yeah, Laurel said highest count in the UK. Absolutely. And that's what we're seeing. And. Um, uh, I was commenting that on this on CNN. Uh, they, that's not, it, it's still, I have to pinch myself when they play a clip from Boris Johnson and they say, Dr. Miskovich, with their nice, you know, Australian or British accents, what do you think of what Boris Johnson said? And I'm like, okay, yeah, I, you know, he's got some great hair. I can't complain about that, but he's kind of crazy. No, I don't say that. That's what my brain is thinking. Um, but basically, I did, I did, uh, give him some credit for the fact that uh, he 
announced two nights ago in an, in a public uh, you know emergency speech to the country that his goal was to have all of the country boosted by the New Year's, that they were going to put this massive public service effort in play to have vaccines everywhere, and we need to do that. The United States needs to do that. We need to do it here. There should never be a question. Everywhere you kind of turn around, you should see vaccine opportunities everywhere. So mm -hmm. what do you think, Dr. Akiona? Well, I mean, we're getting a lot of questions about the, about Omicron. And I think, you know, last night I spent some time in Clubhouse. We were talking about testing and kind of the, that paradox that we're in, in Hawaii in particular, where there's a lot of testing. Um, somebody asked me about like the big island. So we have actually like higher test positivity rates, but really low tests. And they're trying to kind of figure that out. And what's going on? Does that mean we need more tests? And, and you know, and then which kind of tests? And so I think, you know, you and I talked about this a lot where people need a lot more guidance and they need a lot more um, kind of support around the testing process. And so since, you know, there really hasn't been any kind of uh, guidelines for people. I was explaining to them that the testing that's available oftentimes are not kind of the to the to the par that we would like it to be. And so a positive, you know, doesn't actually get that follow up that it used to that, the, you know, the idea of contact tracing and the idea of kind of quarantine and, and what what should they do if they're positive? What are their options for treatment? Where should they go is pretty much non existent. And I think that's that's kind of been like the biggest frustration on uh, is it seems in the community. So it's just kind of one of those, they, they feel like they're stuck because they, on the one hand, they can find testing and then they're trying to figure out what to do because we're, I, I'm telling them like, it's not necessarily good quality testing. And then the constant question is, is this, are they all getting, are they all getting tested for Omicron and who does that? And um, you know, what's the process for that? So maybe you can, you can talk to them about that. Well, okay. So, Here's what I would like to, I didn't have enough time. I was on KITV news, I don't know, yesterday morning or whatever. They woke me up at 5.30. I had to go into my office and try to, I laid out a bunch of tests. Okay, everybody, please share this. Be an informed consumer. What you want to do, I don't care where you're going, when you are going to be offered a test, let's start asking some of these questions. Number one, is it a rapid test? Are you going to give me the results now? And so, yes, no. How, how long will the results take? So how accurate is it? What are the chances that it will miss what I have? Because you know what? If they're quality providers, they will know because Every one of those tests has very specific answers and very specific ways that they're utilized. So ask them, okay? And if they can't answer you, make sure you write down like what kind of test it is. Heck, you could probably stand there and Google it while you're while you're um, uh, waiting for a result if they're going to have you wait and you'll find out all the information. So they better be able to answer that. Um, second thing in this era, you need to ask them, okay well for obviously how long will it take to get a result and in that case you want to ask them uh, how accurate if it's sent off to the lab what type of what type of um, test is this is it a test that's being run at a very high quality lab that's going to give me the best test that we can have or is it just going to be run on some little knockoff machine and I'm going to get some kind of answer. You deserve that answer. Now, you need to ask them, will I be able to know if it is Omicron or not? They better be able to answer that for you because we all should know whether you have this highly contagious variant. Now, I have a, I have a live example going. I have a patient I just followed who basically had a test at a referral from a con that it was in a close contact where there was Omicron present. And uh, they called me and they eventually got a test in urgent care. That test went off to diagnostic laboratories, which is one of our two top labs. And I ended up calling the president of diagnostic and asked him, hey, you know, 
did it have this S drop? It's the signature that we'll see before it gets uh, run through genetic uh, sequencing that gives us a, like a 99% chance that it's already Omicron. And he said, oh no, we ran it on the Abbott ID now. And I was like, ah, that means that this got sent to a major lab and the lab took it and ran it on a machine that's about 80% accurate. That's about a $20 test. Mm -hmm. And we'll have no chance to tell whether it's Omicron or not. And so here's another piece of this story. This is a very much a, a, a Sentinel case. I just got the text today. The test was five days ago. He got called from the Department of Health today for the first time. Five days till contact tracing. Not good. No. Not good. So number one, we have a positive who listened to the media because they were at a place where there was a high risk mm -hmm. of getting Omicron. Did everything right, called me, we got it in. He went, he lived out um, at his side and, and ended up getting a test out there. And so here we are now, no clue whether it's Omicron, just got called by DOH today. That's not how we keep our islands safe. So yeah. everybody be an informed consumer, ask the questions, ask where it's gonna be run, ask how accurate, ask when it's gonna come back. And, and for damn sure, don't let them charge you any money for it. You shouldn't have to pay a nickel out of pocket for anything related to COVID, so. Yeah. And I think okay. um, I was told if I have high suspicion when I'm ordering from clinical labs, I actually write on my requisition now, please run it on the Roche to give yep. them kind of a heads up that I'm, I'm kind of thinking we're going to head towards that, that, that direction. But I know that a lot of our colleagues don't even know to ask for these kind of questions. And the, exactly. Frustrating to me. Exactly. Yeah. So fortunately, um, you know, Dr. Akiona, we, and, and, you know, we have been doing this so long, every, what we're trying to say to you, every test is not the same, not at all. They're so different. And the accuracy of these tests are so different. And you won't know because all you know is you're getting a COVID test. Mm -hmm. And um, they are totally, the, the, the Roche test that she's talking about in that equipment, that's a one and a half million dollar machine. And it's just like crazy versus the other one's a $20 little thing that, you know, is a knockoff, wrong, wrong answer. Um, yeah. So I was uh, putting some questions up because I was going through. Sorry. So this was a question that Raylene, I know that I really she interacts a lot. If someone who had COVID last December and still chooses not to vaccinate till today more easily. To oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Raylene, right now, all, you know, uh, the, the, the immunity that you get from having one of the earlier variants, the alpha, beta, even delta, um, if you haven't been vaccinated, you're 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 really really highly susceptible to uh, to getting Omicron. Even even Beta or Delta, you are still very highly susceptible. There is some deeper set immunity that might protect you from real severe disease. But um, but no, uh, the the studies are really crystal clear that the immunity that is maintained, especially even again after that six month mark from a prior infection is low, Omicron hits and it's nearly non-existent. So please get it. Yeah. yeah. We got another. So I think this one show. So. Wait, I got one from, go ahead. Oh, that one. Well, this one, because no, you... I think this is a kind of, and I've heard this kind of come up like again and again, and they're telling, you know, people will argue with me about the false positive things. And so, yeah, you know, we don't generally need to verify the positives if it, well, so with the rapid test, we have actually been kind of verifying it with the PCR. We keep in mind that, the, again, the tests are not equivalent. So in some cases, especially like with the BD Veritor that we, that we tend to use a little bit more often than the others, they, it actually outperforms the PCR when they're symptomatic. And so, you know, yeah. This, yep. this I think is a generalization, but you know, the false positive things um, that the DOH isn't actually usually the ones doing all the testing. It's usually like a provider. And so that, I think this is a, a loaded thing because this this statement assumes that the DOH is the one following up. And in, gen, in general, it, it the, a lot of the responsibility is on the patient and the providers in the field. So yep. um, we do yep. confirm yep. with the PCR. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and let me jump right over there to Brenda's because it's such a good question. So Brenda Martin asks, so you Brenda. could be tested with uh, and, and be negative and um, still be positive. Absolutely. This is the number one yes. pro problem we have, which is basically called um, uh, a false uh, a false negative. Now, this is important to talk about this because th that this is the huge issue with the at home tests, mm -hmm. right? That home, those at home tests come in packs of two. The reason they come in packs of two, if you read about them, is they are so inaccurate that you do you have to do two sequential tests just to get the possibility of it being accurate up to 75 or 80 percent. If you just do one, it's 50 50, man. It's it's like, you know. Uh, if you're really, really, really sick and you're spewing the, the virus everywhere and you're coughing and hacking and febrile and you have headaches and things, well, it possibly is going to be positive then. But if you're in the anywhere in that in-between zone, you you got to do two of them and you're still going to only have a three out of four chance. So that's why they're at home tests. You know, they're, they're mass produced things. Um, so when you really look at what is the use of at home tests in a perfect world, if we all had one where we could wake up every morning and swap ourselves and check every morning, it would be good. Would would have would go up into the 80, 90 percent chances that that might be able to tell us before we walk out the door. But one tells you flip a coin if you're going to do one. Um, two, a little better, but still, okay. I know we had a few from before testing quality and delay. Um, oh, this is a question about how long. Um, and I did actually one of the one of the teachers came out to ask me this question because she had gotten her Moderna early on, got boosted uh, in October, and she was coming out to ask me if she could. She's like, "What? What do you think about me getting another a fourth shot?" And so this, like, how long okay. do you think this? Is so. Well, okay. This is well. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. This is good. Yeah. No. I'm gonna. I'm going to give the standard answer that would come from CDC and FDA, and then I'm going to give you the personal answer, and I'm going to give you yeah. a personal <laughs> answer. So, so the real answer is that they would it is they would probably tell you. And Liz, if you have any type of of uh, immunosuppression or or disease that would put you at risk, that would change our answer. But just say say age is your risk and otherwise you're relatively healthy, then right now we would probably say that you're good to go, that you're, you know, that we do not have a standard guideline in the United States to do anything more. There are countries that are right now at three months after that offering you another booster because of your age and your risk. So other countries are doing it just to to realize that, you know, when people are over the age of 65, that's 70, that's three quarters of our, uh, of our of our mortality comes from people over 65. Remember, one of every American over the age of 65, as of three days ago, has died of COVID. That's so dramatic, right? 600,000 out of 800,000. Uh, of our deaths are people over 65. So anybody who's over uh, 65 and has even a hint of any of the um, conditions that make you predisposed, you should talk to your doctor or heck, come to the Mel and Charlie show and we'll try to give you good advice. But there could be chances that you should already be considering to get a fourth. Now, why do I say that based off of trying to be standard and give the give the standard line? If you right now say you have a true immunosuppression or you're taking medication that suppresses your immune system, we are giving you four shots and fifth shots and six shots, right? So based on your individual condition, there may be indications to continue to boost you because you get your antibodies, they stay up, and then you wane at three months, not six months. So it's, there are, there are very customized answers to this. If you have a doctor that understands the nuances and intricacies, and then the most important thing I'm going to tell everybody here, 
you're never going to OD on immunizations. You are you are never going to hurt yourself by mistakenly getting one at three months instead of six months. So that's crystal clear right now. Okay. This one. We are actually, we're encouraging people to get the flu vaccine in addition to the COVID vaccine. And I know this comes up a lot, but. Um, and we get them, we give them together. It's now yep. safe to give them simultaneously. We give them together. Um, Dr. Akiona probably has a vial in her pocket right now. And, <laughs> um, and, the, um, and the answer is also, we have just now on that same machine that we will do the rapid, the BD Veritor, which is what we used at our Olympic events. We now have um, the multiplex, which is same swab goes in the machine. It comes out with flu A, flu B, and COVID. And that's kind of the wave of the future, but, um, but we're doing it right now. And just to highlight to everyone, this is already turning out to be a slight uptick and a worse in flu season than last year. So we are definitely starting to see more flu. So, um, yeah, Janelle. To protect yeah. ourselves, because I think, you know, in the past, we used to have a lot more flu. And then when we kind of what what it showed from the last two years was that all the mitigation things that we do, all of the masking, the social distancing has an effect on all a lot of the viruses, especially the respiratory viruses. And so, you know, now that we're, we were kind of slowly getting more social and starting to travel a little bit more. We, we, we never forget about the flu because it does actually contribute significantly to some morbidity and mortality. So some, some illness, hospitalizations and death. And so that's why we say good to get both because um, yep. we're, not, we're not trading out one for the other, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and then Janelle was saying, can a doctor say no? Yeah, I guess so. Any doctor can say no. But um, my answer is, you if you're listening to this show, you're getting really, really straight up information by, um, you know, because obviously we watch this show and I'm not only talking about us, but anybody that's on this show, straight up information by people really dedicated a portion of their lives to, to really making sure they're current on this and just to be offering honest information. And the answer is, yeah, you can go to some people and they say no, but don't stop. Find, find, find the people who know what they're doing and you'll get a good honest answer. And if not, call us, call, call the Mel and Charlie show. You know, we're, we're on almost weekly. So, um, yeah. Uh, so what else do we have? Um, there's another one. So, Someone tested positive, went to her doctor and they said she had antibodies. So it sounds like maybe she got the monoclonal, you think like the Regeneron treatment, cause that does actually temporarily give them some protection. And there was that recommendation about, um, oh, okay. I guess happy. that's saying that, that she got mono. Yeah, she got monoclonal antibodies. Mm -hmm. Well, this is actually a good a good way to segue to talk about that. Um, okay, <laughs> one of the things that we need to really start standing on rooftops and talking about more in our state, which has totally been underplayed, is the effect of what we call monoclonal antibodies. Those are the injection or an IV that when you're diagnosed and you are at risk will reduce your chances of death or hospitalization by 90%, nine zero. That's massive. Like say if you were, you know, kind of bigger and diabetic and had heart disease and all of a sudden you were a smoker, you got COVID, you go get that shot, you're, you would be able to reduce your chance of death. Well, okay, now comes along Omicron. Four out of the five monoclonal antibodies that we used to have as these magic arrows in our quiver don't work. That's how serious Omicron is. I mean, just that alone should have people understand, like, why isn't, like, the world a lot more concerned about this when these, these multi-billion dollar developments that were meant to save the world, all of a sudden, one little variant and they're gone, nothing. Well, the good news is one of the newer ones is way up in the 90%. And so we are now working on getting those. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the group that does this, and we should have them in the state next week. And so therefore, one of the things, and Dr. Akiona, you, I sent it to you, which I presented to New Mexico, and I presented to Arizona 
uh, to the other states that I'm currently working in right now. Here's my recommendation. Everybody who is out there doing testing, remember testing, we got all these, these profiteering groups out there doing testing. They're testing not because they care about the state or not because they care about you. They're testing because they're sucking up large profits on it. Okay, to be blunt, testing is a medical event. And I'm proposing that any testing provider has to do a couple things. Number one, they have to screen you for a, um, if you are eligible to get these treatments, meaning are you at risk or not? And they should hand you information right after your swab has been put in your nose and say, hey, your form says you're at risk. So if you're positive, here's information on this thing called monoclonal antibody, which could save your life. So if we call you, we're going to help you. You read it if you want, because, of course, everybody gets to decide whether they get a shot or not. We can't force it on you. And, and you should get it done. Test comes back. Dr. Akiona gets it, and whoa, you're positive. She calls you, or one of our staff calls you and says, hey, you're positive. Remember that form, that monoclonal antibody thing? We will have you set up for an appointment tomorrow. Can I put you into a schedule? Because then I want to propose that we have direct access to the scheduling so that therefore, as soon as you're positive, because the sooner you get that, the lower your chances are of developing severe disease. Then you get right into an appointment. And can I ask the good Dr. Akiona where she was? Was it Saturday or Sunday this week? Um, where, where was she? Can you, maybe she can tell me. Yeah. So I was giving two Regeneron treatments. And one of them was a triple vaccinated positive who was symptomatic. And so high suspicion of Omicron, but we got to treat him before. I mean, he he had 48 hours worth of symptoms. So right. we were treating and- And this individual was, you had to drive, what, 45 minutes or an hour from your house, and you had to go to their homes. And this person was kind of in a high-risk Pacific Island Native Hawaiian community. That's that's who's sitting here talking to right now, someone who cares enough about our community to go out on a Saturday or Sunday and to be sitting there for an hour um, talking story after she's giving monoclonal antibody treatments to someone and that's what it's all about. And so it's not all about these companies trying to suck federal dollars out to produce swaps. So then the next thing is, so so monoclonal antibodies, think about it. The next thing is somewhere in the first two weeks of January, we're going to have Paxlovid. Uh, Paxlovid sounds like a Christmas dessert that one of my Slovakian grandmothers used to make. So, uh, um, but Paxlovid is a, a uh, new oral pill that Pfizer has made, which is going to be outstanding. We have had three confirmations in the last week from Pfizer that the medication is 88 and 89% effective if you take it within the first three days of symptoms of stopping hospitalization and death. So now you have an oral oral pill that can be called to stop you from dying. That's taken twice a day. So if people are all wigged out, oh, I don't want to take experimental med. It's really developed off of this thing as Tamiflu, which we've all been getting forever when you call prescriptions in to try to reduce the severity of the flu. Well, this medicine's available, and I'm, I've proposed this to New Mexico, Arizona, the same the same thing and basically so you've got a testing group that's out there and that testing group can be an urgent care it can be a drive-through it can be your doctor's office it could be emergency room anybody who's testing i want to take responsibility that the test is a medical event and then you get called for a positive prescription goes in hey you're positive just gonna let you know i'm calling with positive and what you want me to call your pills into start them Nine out of 10 chance that you're not going to progress to die for just taking a couple pills. And I guarantee you the federal government's going to cover all of this for free. And so, um, you know, I just want, because what you do not want 
is some rogue, you know, organization that just basically sends a text to you. And then you have to figure out, just find your doctor if he's on, he or she's on vacation, or do they even know anything about COVID, or do they know anything about this pill or not, and then hope that someone's going to call it in? No, it should be in immediately. So that's what I'm proposing to other states, and that's what I like our state of Hawaii to do. But good luck. I just wanted to make okay. sure. I just wanted to make sure people knew that. So Uncle Uncle Mal and Uncle Charlie are both okay. Um, Uncle Mel and I had a conversation about me just guest hosting um, because we both, I mean, all four of us are pretty workaholics. And so the nice words that Dr. Miskovich had for me, it go, it, there's, it's a double-edged sword, right? So, I mean, I, I, I work like a single person, which means that I, I miss some family time. <laughs> Um, it's okay right now because my daughter's in school. But yeah, I do know that sometimes um, Dr. Miskovich, Uncle Mel, Uncle Charlie, they've all told me, you know, we all have to remember to take breaks sometimes, especially now. If You know, a lot of us are, are seeing our families get sick. And, um, you know, I think there was a moment where I, you know, I talked with Uncle Mel about just not missing more time with your kids, right? So don't put it off till later. Don't say, oh, no, you know, wait, wait a little while. So he, he's okay. Um, he's he's doing some family things and we're 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 trying the the jimmy fallon thing where he just has a guest host that's all and yes marie it's my mug and i have one for a doctor <laughs> so, like, um <laughs> hey let me let me answer scotty's um um question um one of the things that we're a little bit worried about is that uh actually that number of doses that will be available will be you know, they've already announced, I don't know, they'll probably have a to start out the first two weeks, have a couple hundred thousand uh, prescriptions available, and then it will ramp eventually up to 10 million. So one of the things we're not sure of as providers is what type of handcuffs they're going to put on us to tell us you can only give it to this person, you can't give it to this person, you can't give it to this person. And they're probably going to come out because there'll be a very limited supply and demand and say, only give it to the people who are going to have a chance of dying, right? And they'll put very strict guidelines on who gets it and who doesn't, and we have to follow those. But as we would expect, fortunately, I think still while we're in this, this dark winter of COVID, you know, we're going to then have a very ample supply of it available. Uh, will it get to a point where you can have a prescription in your medicine cabinet? Eh, eventually, this is America. We'll probably be able to. Uh, hell, you'll probably get it from Amazon. But um, <laughs> but the bottom line is not yet. Not yet. And if you have a competent doctor, and I think, you know, we should be able to get it to you once uh, supply demand hits. See this one? Oh, how? I think this one's interesting because we're this so this pandemic is something I I'm hoping we never have to see again but this is like a we're we're kind of in a once in a lifetime kind of moment um we haven't really faced this kind of this kind of threat kind of worldwide so I think um she's so what Jan is saying just you know why are we talking about so much boosting and uh, I know well. <laughs> it's this is sort of an equity question, sort of like a global question. Sorry, there's Janie. <laughs> hey, okay, okay, Jan, I'm going to give you the, um, I'm going to give you, uh, give you the pessimism um, of 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 where I was back in um, November, December of uh, of nineteen, as I was sitting here, like just like I have been, I was standing on the rooftops already before it even came to the U S and saying, watch out, watch out. This is bad, man. This is coming. This is coming because I had studied SARS and MERS and realized that this was going to be a potential problem. And as it expanded in Wuhan, it was clear. Well, SARS and MERS were treated very seriously. Remember those are coronaviruses that, you know, had the same type of uh, zoonotic transmission. There was a lot of effort being put into creating vaccines at that point, because at that point there was a real question that, uh oh, is this the one? Is this the one that's going to transition over and have this big break into a pandemic? We've been preparing for this as a world. Well, guess what? They weren't able to do it that well. 
you know, we had all that time with SARS and MERS, and they were like, damn, this coronavirus, it's a tricky bugger. It's out there everywhere, and it jumps from animals. It's in the lions at the zoo. It's in the, the, the shivets. It's in all these different animals. And, heck, it's circulating in the human population, causing all kind of regular common colds and all kind of varieties. Um, it's just, it's just... It's just all over the map. It's a pesky bugger. And um, um, uh, so a lot of us early on were like, oh, we are really in trouble because we already have had some experience with this classification of virus. And, and I mean, we were, we were 0 for 2 or 3 on it. And, and, and you know, at best, there was just a mild amount of success with it. So when the mRNA vaccines came together and we started to get the success that we had for the last year, and here we are, everybody, as we're talking, we we're about a year ago, we started actually from the trial, start putting shots in. It's incredible. The honest answer is a lot of us never dreamed we could be where we are right now because of what the history of coronaviruses were and the, the lack of success in developing. So to think that we got through a year and you got two shots and now you're getting a booster and the chances are with that third booster base on the studies coming out of Oxford and out of uh, um, Israel, that you're going to be in the high 90%, that you're not going to die and go to the hospital. Hallelujah. Really, say your prayers tonight. Truly thank God, because this is an absolute miracle. And so if you've been watching this show, you would have heard me say, Dr. Akiona, other people on here, you have one of the top experts in the world in Jerome Kim. And we had been saying all along, you will need a booster. More than likely, this is going to change. And more than likely, it's going to be your flu shot and coronavirus shot. And you know what? We're right. And guess what? More than likely, you know, it's going to be that way for indefinitely, if not forever. And, um, you know, we I am predicting you've heard me say it. I'm going to say it again. Bottom line is, I think that once we hit April, we are going to be offered another Pfizer Omicron specific vaccine. OK. And then at that point. Who knows? Is it going to be a year? Is it going to be fall or flu season before we get another? The answer is vaccinate the world. Then we might be stopping this discussion and having that line stretch out. Okay. Sorry, I like this one. I read I read George's comment and it made me smile. So what's the comment? Um, so Lieutenant Governor admitted today that Hawaii really is on like maybe 20% fully vaxxed because Yinji asked his question. <laughs> and so, I mean, it's really, really hard because I think, you know, we talked about this in several different venues, but the, the kind of frequent downplaying, I, you know, it's, it's human nature to want to look on the bright side of things, but this is getting kind of ridiculous. So it's, I know it's, it's really hard for people to hear, to see one thing and hear another. And to live in that disparity, like the, ah, what's going on? So, I mean. Yeah. Well, um, I was, if you go back and you can go through this, this ridiculous number of CNN times I have, but I prep the, um, I have producers that will call me and help me. Um, they'll tell me, you know, this is our topic and, and we'll discuss talking points and things like that. A lot of times they just hit me cold. Sometimes I have a little input, but, but the more I'm working with CNN, I've been on about 84 times. They trust me. And I said, please make this one of these questions. I said, I'm tired of the word booster. We need to start talking what full immunity is. So I, in my CNN appearance, called out the CDC and I called out the World Health Organization. Not that I have any status, but, you know, this is what we need to do. And I called out states and organizations to start using the term fully vaccinated to referring to people that have three shots or two of J&J. &J. 
And guess what? It's now taking hold. And guess what? Now that Omicron hit, it's it's exactly what everybody needs to understand because two is just partial right now. Okay. I don't know. Anything you wanted to? Hey, I can I can say. Um, let me call out George. George, you and the L LG are like this, man. Man, I, I I can. You guys you guys are just like you guys are really there together. He, he, he loves your questions. <laughs> so, Send more. George, George, Send more. George, George is, leaves no question unturned, man. He is so spot on. Uh, yeah. Um, the question is, are kids yeah. safe with the... With yeah, the, that's a good one. That came up today, actually. Yeah. Well, okay. So here's the answer you have. So you, depending on... It's all about the timing. When we were talking about this three, four months ago... We start talking about waning immunity. Well, what we now know is immunity wanes in most people. We're starting to see it wane at six months. And starting at three months, it starts to go down further. So say you have um, uh, a seven-year-old and they had their first shot six weeks ago. They just had their next shot, um, you know, three, four weeks after that. They're fine, you know. Their immunity will probably wane at um, six months, but but it likely won't because the immune response to the from the five to eleven year olds is massive, and we may find an age specific um, uh, a time where we may see it's a year for that age group. As a generality, when we started to, do, to look at the antibody um, uh, response and the immune response, it was younger, massive, and it held on. And then you start hitting, like, you know, actually, when we looked at six months after the 12-year-olds, at six months, a lot of them were higher than where they started because they have such great immune response. And you got in 20s, 30 to 35, holding steady as a rock because they got a great immune response. These are the people out of the trials we're talking about. Well, then you got over 35 or 40, and it went down a little bit, 10%, oh. 20, 50%. Then you hit, you know, you hit 50, maybe 50 up to 60 or something. Yeah, it went down another 25. Uh, you get over 65, uh-oh, it's down 20, 25%. You get over 75, it drops. Because, hey, as we get older, our immune response, our body's saying, chill out, man chill out i'm not i'm, I'm kind of hanging out go get me another coffee or you know or, or a cocktail or something but i'm not going to be sitting here making <laughs> antibodies all day long um so so what we are going to see as we get better science looking at the immunizations is more than likely we're going to see age group specific mm -hmm. booster recommendations and the high likelihood is that five to eleven year old age group you know, we could be chasing them for years with two shots and not have to worry. We don't yeah. know yet, but but th there's a higher likelihood that will be the case. Same thing with the, um, you know, that uh, 11 to 18 year old age group or something like that. Yeah. And I think it's important to kind of, you know, like the conversations we were having with the parents at Konawana Elementary was that, you know, vaccinations is an important part of the toolkit, the toolbox that we have to protect our kids. But we still have, you know, making sure that we all kind of talk about the testing that we should be having, you know, that we should be having done. You know, Dr. Miskovich is um, trialing the test to stay model in New Mexico, which is modeled after the UK. And that's something that's possible, right? So we don't want to take kids out of class unnecessarily, but we have to have a plan. And so that's one of the things that we, you know, with the parents we talked about, it's really important to get people vaccinated. Some people are choosing not to vaccinate their kids. We still got to keep them safe. So it's the, the testing, it's the mitigation stuff. You know, so the, the principal came out to talk to me about that because it's different by different districts, right? So it's a, um, it's coming down to different principals making different, decisions and he's saying it's really hard because the recommendations are not across the board even and so he was just about to pull back on some of their um like their mitigation things how far they're spacing and then omicron happened and then he's kind of just like what do i do now because you know like you guys are asking you know 
do, are we going to have to boost our kids? What does this mean? And so just keeping in mind that there's testing, there's the masking, there's the distancing, there's just so many layers to what we're doing. And it's important. Every single layer is important. Um, and just being what you guys, you know, an engaged audience, an educated audience and asking the questions because we still don't know what's up with testing in the DOE. So that's, that's another day. That's another day. <laughs> Before you answer that question, let me go to one I don't want to let drop, and that's okay. Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia. Uh, Rubenstein. That is a really, really important question. She says she has a friend who's had two shots, they have zero antibodies. They need another booster. That is mm -hmm. when it, earlier we were, I was talking about some people were getting shots every three months. That's a person that if they have a really good oncologist, a really good doctor, will be looking at them and saying, oh, you don't have any immune response? You need another yeah. booster in a month. And then they'll check antibodies. They'll see the response and they'll say, oh, guess what? You need another one because there are mm -hmm. some patients in that category now that are getting them every month, every two months, every three months. So that person yeah. definitely needs to be checked. Um, okay. I did have well, one patient. I think they were getting um, a monoclonal antibodies uh, like every so often as well because they were high risk. I think somebody got COVID. And so I remember having to drive out and treat somebody like that. And it was specifically for this reason, because they weren't making any antibodies. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. That's a boy. What a great segue. Wow. Okay. I, I think I might've mentioned that there, um, there is a, a new, um, what's it? Evo. Evie Evo Shield. Blue. Yeah. Evie Shield. That's it. Mm -hmm. Evie Shield. Thank you for reminding me of that. Every shield um, came out, and hey, just think, there are some 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 people are paid gazillions of dollars to come up with those names. Um, yeah, so someone figured out every shield. I like it. Shield, you know, that's great. I still can't figure out that Paxlovid because it sounds like <laughs> it, um, does. it sounds like some foreign food. But the bottom line is every shield. Okay, everybody, listen to this one. We talked about monoclonal antibodies. That is where you get the disease and, and we want you to be called where you're at risk and you get a shot from, hey, you get a home visit from Dr. Akiona. What else could you ask for? <laughs> People are going to go catch it just so they can have talks to work for it with you. Um, and so um, and so basically you you basically um, uh, would get that now. This new Evi Shield. What this is for is take the last question I had with the friend who has chemotherapy and is zero antibodies. That person needs Evi Shield. Okay. What that is, it's a monoclonal antibody injection only for that type of person who is not mounting a response. They get the injection. I think it's two shots with Evi Shield. Um, and it gives them six months. A protection with a long-term monoclonal antibody and it's only for those people who just can't mount the response so that's really really an important thing for people to understand yeah Ooh, can we can we group can we group source this one look at this What's george that? is busy george is busy so what would be three things you think the board of education needs to hear i feel like the crowd could actually kind of contribute to this one but i know that you have some top three things there's certainly Three things I know I'd like them to answer. Mostly about okay. testing, I think. But first, there is a Santa. No question. Okay. Rudolph deserves respect. So it does. Um, I mean, yeah. it's abuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know Rudolph is like his dad. Joke. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so George, um, what would we say they need to hear? Um, okay, Board of first Education. thing, first thing is we're really coming close to break, and and so kind of on the tail end, um, be careful with Christmas parties and things like that because we are you know seeing a big spike in schools right now. What I would say, most important thing I would say to George is. Every student coming back from break, they should set up a mass testing program where everybody gets tested as soon as they come back. Because let's face it, they're all gonna be at risk. Everybody's at risk after a holiday. So set up mass, mass testing um, that, you know, where they just have a, the day people are coming back, they should be having people lined up to do testing everywhere. 
Um, and uh, that would be number one. Number two is, I don't know why they haven't talked about it in the state, but we, it's, it's going across the United States. It's starting up in the state of Washington, but they really want to look at the test to stay program. It is, it is just the program the United States is using. Not a human is talking about it here in our, our, um, our, uh, uh, our DOE. Um, I also designed off of that and it's now going through uh, New Mexico and other areas, we did the test to play program. And it is exactly the same takeoff on the test to stay. So we can keep athletes in our high schools playing uh, safely. And so we should consider that. Um, and uh, and then I see uh, 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 Marielle, is that it? Murray. Murray? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I wow. like it. Now, hey, you know, I, I, I took like, I took 14 years of French. Ah, oui, Marie. Um, <laughs> so um, I'm sorry I didn't get that French pronunciation right. Um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, CO2 monitors would be great. Uh, ventilation fans, that would be fabulous. There should be, instead of hoping that the, 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 the schools get it right, there should be hired inspectors to be able to go and give advice for people that are trained to do it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, with the break, do it over the holidays, man. Yep. You know, so um, that should be done. That, sh that should be done. Um, and uh, I don't know. And, and, and then my, my final one is always going to be masks. We need, mm -hmm. we should spend some of our federal money and we should find a way for Every school in the state of Hawaii should be given proper fitting and 95 masks, probably three to four different sizes that are appropriate for different age groups. And there should be videos and training sessions on the proper fit. And every freaking kid should get a minimum of one mask a week, probably two paid for by tax dollars. And they, so it shouldn't be a fashion statement. It should be, you come to school, here's your mask, and this is a good mask, right? So um, so that would be my, those would be my three. Thanks. What do you think, George? We need George to host one of these shows, man. He's, I know, he's, right? He's George, George, we should send George. him the link. He can just hang out with us. Yeah, yeah, George. Should come. Should come. So. Yeah. Well, we're because we're wrapping, I mean, we're almost to the 8 o'clock hour. And I, I don't know if did did Miss Sharon hear that she got a shout out from Janelle that we that she's they, that it was noticed how hard she was working behind you. <laughs> oh, she? I, I I'm I'm just focused on you guys. I'm reading questions, man. I don't know. I don't know. She's she is hardworking. That's that's what thirty and half, thirty and a half years of marriage. Thirty. Please and a half help your wife. <laughs> yes, I help her. Yeah. Did you see her slap me upside the head? No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, masks, uh, uniforms, uh, purchase and distribute. Yeah, I mean, we the the kids, Kiki. I don't know. Do, do you want to? Um, I can give you a moment. You can do your, any last thoughts for the day. Now you. Talk. Um. Well, I was back to Santa is real, Rudolph. I didn't come up mm -hmm. with the third one, but um, no, I I um, I just think my thoughts of the day are i wish we had a massive drive in our state similar to the uk right now where everybody could turn around every corner and find boosters and we really had a big push for boosters and um, i wish we had a massive public service campaign that talked about how serious omicron could be and how we stay safe over the holidays. Not just like, oh yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Um, another one, without calling out names or people, hospitalizations should not be our barometer for safety in our population and COVID, right? That is already now committing people to die, okay? Our goal should be to keep you out of the hospital, should be to, I mean, look what I just explained. 
easy programs to implement. Getting monoclonals, which are out there, paid for the gov- by the government, they're out there in such big supply. We can get millions of them, not millions, but I mean, we have so many available, and now we're going to have pills, and then we should be able to get masks to people. Don't wait till people go in the hospital. Don't let a Wahoo be at 500 and have people looking looking at you on television with a straight face and saying, well, I'm more interested in what the hospital count is. Because guess what? Then the next thing they say is, oh, we still have ICU beds. Oh, we still have 200 ventilators. And then it's, well, we still have those three morgue trucks that we bought. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Safety first, keep people out of the hospital, get these numbers down because we still have a chance to get them down. That's how we save lives. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, I think that's the, the, the reality is that it's, it's such a weird balance, I think, because it's been, you know, you, you we remember what the Delta surge was like and we, I feel like it's in the pit of our stomach, just kind of like, you know, what could really happen? And that a lot could be done, a lot more could be done to stop it. And I think that's been the the awful roller coaster of the last two years, <laughs> just trying to figure out how to move a mountain. So you know, it's been it's been fun learning with you, though. <laughs> well, well, go ahead. Give your give your give your big shout out to the village in the world for <laughs> what you want to see and what you want to leave them with. And yeah, come on. Why don't you give us your big, you know, your big shout? Because you know, everybody needs to understand, you know, she is like a superhero on the big island, you know, focusing on the people at need. Uh, and, and, you know, again, the Pacific Island community, the Native Hawaiian community, you know, yeah, the, the, the outreach, the outreach. You know, yeah. just just think about it. You have all these big for profit um, testing companies and they all jump into the big cities where they can get high volume, ignore the populations at risk. Who's there? Dr. Akiona. And, you know, that's where, our, yeah, that's where <laughs> I want our group to be. And so, you know, it's hard work. It's not profitable. But you know what? We know what the death rates are. We know the we know the the groups that have been left out. Let's have a plan. Yeah. 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 And I think, um, yeah. So, I mean, I actually am a native Hawaiian health scholar. And so I think that's one of the things like that's how I got to go to medical school was they helped pay for it. And then in return, I had to come back and I knew, right. So I was going to pay back the time in, pri- in primary care. So I spent the last couple years with Dr. Miskovich doing the last two years of my service. And I just finished on December 7th and I had to sit there and think about the legacy. Like they ask you questions like, you know, what was the impact of serving a Hawaiian, the Hawaiian community? What was the challenges? All these kind of things. And what's your legacy? And I think that was the heart. And it was not really hard, but, you know, really COVID has changed it a lot because before COVID, before COVID, I got along with Dr. Scott because we had a similar commitment to the marginalized and the vulnerable. So we were already focusing on on homeless populations. And the hardest part was looking at the homeless population and realizing that a significant amount of them looked like me. A lot of them were like, you know, like my cousins and my uncles, and they just needed better care. So before the pandemic even started, we knew that there were problems in our community. And, you know, there's not a lot of people who are willing to kind of focus on that. But we really do believe, and and this is something that I continue to say again and again, if you're able to care for the most vulnerable and the most marginalized and you improve their lives, you improve the lives of the entire community. And that's something that I think is lost right now in healthcare in general, because healthcare as as a moneymaker, as a business would disagree with me. But when you really look at it, um, if we're able to take better care of the people who need it the most, they actually spend less time in the ER, they spend less time in the hospital, we can, you know, it, it's the pay it forward kind of value, the return on investment is huge. And so I think the pandemic actually kind of forced all of us to kind of think like, well, not a lot of people agree with us, but we have to think like us, we have to think about where the vulnerabilities are, where the marginalized are, because that's where COVID's going to go. And so suddenly, all the things that we had been saying, becomes more important. 
And I think that's the, the, the hard part has been kind of the stamina. And I think, you know, that's one of the things I like about being a part of the village is it's um, having like-minded people to kind of, sometimes we need to preach to the choir because it is tired. Just um, a lot of you guys are from outer islands. And so you know what it's like to hear Honolulu make a plan that we know absolutely will not work for us or to take it, you know, take it for granted that we might have resources that we really don't. And I think one of the most important things that I ever wanted people to take away from Premier was that we don't take anything for granted and that it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter where you live or who you're from. You were going to treat you the same way. And, and then that means that we're going to be a little bit punchy and we'll joke around with you, but we're going to give you really good care because, you know, the effort that it takes to educate an anti-vaxxer or somebody who's just afraid, um, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, we got to put the effort in uh, because everybody deserves to make an informed choice. Um, and whether they decide to or not, I'm going to keep on being persistent. And you can ask all the workers that are unvaccinated. I ask them every time we test them, are you ready to get vaccinated today? And they say, oh, no. And I say, okay, well, I'll see you next week because <laughs> I'm going to ask you again. And the reality is that's going to be our legacy. Our legacy is going to be just trying to treat everybody with the same annoying, persistent, quality education that we can. And I think, you know, Dr. Miskovich affords, lets me be who I, who I can be for the Hawaiian community. And that's why I, I, I like, like being here. And um, Uncle Mel gave me this opportunity. So I appreciate him too. I know he's popping in and out. Um, he, he's at a function right now. So I think he's been checking on us. So far, thumbs up, you guys. Well, um, I, I want to just also continue to thank the village because um, it's interesting. You know, we, you and I have dedicated our lives to this as have some other people. And it's like there's certain people that just keep popping up and popping up in all types of media. And I'm, I'm Facebook, I'm on, I'm a, a, a star advertiser live and everywhere. And we're asking the hard questions. We're driving for the right answers. And I look back and so much of the Genesis has been through Mel and Charlie. So I want to say thanks so much for, for Mel and Charlie, for being who they are, for being persistent and spending the time. And, um, and my God, they've gone through so much. They've been shut down. They've been turned off. They've been accused and things like that, as have all of us. You know, uh, all of us have the same. But you know what? Eventually, I'll find my way to sleep tonight, and I'll say my prayers, and I will have no questions that anything I'm doing is to help the people of Hawaii. That's it. That's it. And the, the thing everybody does have to know when they look at what we do and how we do it, as doctors, saving one life is where we go every single day. You know, we, you know, it, that's the essence of who we are and what we do because think about it. That one life is a family member, it's a husband, it's a wife, it's a child, it's a grandparent. And that person touches so many other people, especially in, in the, the true the spirit true of Ohana in Hawaii. And look at, as you play it forward, and you talk like about the spread of Omicron or something, well, what about the spread of, of the loss of that life? And we've had what, almost 1,100 people? That's huge, that's huge. And so how can a leader right now in our state go to sleep and say, hmm, eight people died today. Hmm, five people died yesterday. Well, none the other day, five the next day, eight the next day. How can they sleep knowing that they had the potential to save some of those lives. I, it, I, it's incomprehensible to me to think that, that you look in the mirror and you don't realize that you're responsible because, you know, you are. So, okay. we do have, um, if you guys have time, I did, I did join the clubhouse um, chat 
yesterday and um so if, and they they invited you doc they want it's it's kind of nice you, you can hear everybody talking they ask you questions it's in a really nice um kind of chance for people to just have an open forum everybody has an equal voice and so it's clubhouse i'm trying to um let me get that that link one more time for you guys here um you do download it uh sorry you do download the app and get it you get invited but so Tuesdays and, and I guess Friday at five. Uh, okay. And then of course, we'll do the plug for Mel and Charlie. Um, so yep. you know he's on LinkedIn. So this is live on Facebook, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, and on his Twitter. Oh, hey, hang on. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. 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 <laughs> I can hardly hear yes. you. My <laughs> thing is How are you guys doing? <laughs> wow. Just want to say thank you guys for filling in tonight. We're uh, up here at Iliahi on Kauai. Uh, we had a uh, Christmas gathering with um, with some friends, so uh, appreciate you guys jumping in and and uh, carrying the show tonight. Uh, I've been checking in and out throughout the night whenever I had the opportunity, but you guys are solid. You know what? I can go on vacation now and not even have to worry because you guys got this thing done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's Dr. Akiona. I was just nothing but the same old pain in the ass guest, you know. So, so, uh, yeah. So she. I don't know why I cannot uh, hear you guys. I don't not sure why. I don't know. Oh, because you're partying. Wait, wait, that's wait. why. I'm not sure that's, what. That's from. See, I never did. I never did this. <laughs> this is from the alcohol. I, I never. I never. Hang on. I'm trying to get straight here. Yeah, I never um, did this from my phone before. Got this guy. But I cannot get this volume to work. So. Oh. And then I got we, this guy. We hear you. We're okay. That's can you guys can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, I cannot hear you, folks. I'm not sure why. It's probably because I have something. I have this thing that's not. Hang on here. Oh wait, I can't uh, do it. Anyway. I just want to say thank you guys and to the viewers thank you guys for tuning in tonight um i'm gonna go on the way home we're gonna watch the replay patsy and i because i'm sure there's a lot of information a lot of stuff going on in the state you two guys are heroes appreciate you guys uh please uh stay safe we will be in touch and um to the viewers we'll we'll see you guys shortly take care god bless we love you guys Yay. oh this way okay bye guys you ready to go? Call it a night. Oh, we're ready to go. Call it a call it a uh call, call it a, a shock a night. There you yeah, go. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Doc. Bye bye. Bye, -bye. bye guys.